A workflow is a step-by-step -step process designed to give structure and consistency to a task that's repeated over and over again. And consistency is how you build speed and accuracy in that task. But how do you implement that into your astrophotography? And everything that I touch base on in this video, I will have links in the description of this video to my videos which go more in depth into those subjects. So if you're new to the channel, don't worry. Check out those videos for more information on those subjects. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And with how overwhelming this hobby can be, especially when you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out what to do, when, where, how, or why, now that we have the basics down as far as our equipment and our software, I'm going to show you my imaging workflow. And you'll see workflow come up in subjects like PixInsight, PixInsight workflow and things like that. Well, I use a workflow in my imaging as well, so I can make sure that I'm consistent from night to night. And you're more than welcome to use my workflow exactly how I present it, or you can make it your own. And if you're just getting started in this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information as we've covered a lot so far, and we have a long way to go. So let's uh, head over and let's get started with imaging workflow. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick tour of Nina so you can see how mine is set up and be able to follow along a little bit better. Now, on the left, you'll see a vertical uh, row of different tabs. The first one is equipment, which is going to be all of your equipment and how you connect to it, such as your camera, filter wheel, focuser, rotator, telescope, guider, so on and so forth. Sky Atlas is going to be your planetarium. This is where you choose your target. We'll take, uh, let's go to M16 and hit enter, and then it'll give you your coordinates. You can either slew to it, set it for framing, or add it to a sequence. Framing is going to be uh, setting how you want Nina to frame your target. And you can adjust, you know, your uh, rotation. You can do a mosaic, different things like that. And then you can slew and center, slew, center, and rotate, or add it to a sequence straight from here, and that'll carry over your rotation and everything else associated. Flat wizard is where you'll take your flat frames and dark flat frames. Sequencer is everything about your sequence from your camera to meridian flip to slewing, centering, rotating, guiding, and even autofocus. Imaging, this is the cockpit to your telescope. And you'll have all kinds of different icons up over here and over here, and all of these equate to what you see right here. Now, what I use mainly is gonna be my focuser and my camera, my telescope. And you'll see uh, once we get to the next part what these look like and the information that they give out. I uh, keep an eye on my guider. This is the image. This is what the telescope is seeing. This right here gives me quick access to my um, camera to just to take a quick exposure. This comes in handy uh, before I polar align to be able to set my initial focus. Sequence gives me a quick snapshot of how deep into a sequence I am. Image history will allow me to scroll back and choose different images that have already been taken and display them bigger over here so I can check for different uh, things like uh, elongated stars that might indicate some guiding issues or even uh, current HFR status. Plate solving, which uh, allows me to, uh, let's say I'm going to be imaging M16 and I just slew over to it. And then I want to go ahead and plate solve so I can have it centered. Um, this will allow me to uh, get to my target quickly and accurately 
so I can do a sharp cap smart histogram uh, sky analysis for recommended exposures. And it also has my autofocus, which uh, gives me the statistics of how my autofocus ran, HFR for the current focus, along with focuser position. Now, the last two icons here under options, the uh, only things that you're really going to be uh, using pretty consistently in here is under imaging, setting the uh, folder that you want your images to save under, and then plate solving to be able to choose as tap. And then the last one, plugins, is where you'll find different things such as three point polar alignment as well as other um, pretty useful items in here. The most important part of your imaging session is going to be your equipment. Without your equipment, you're not going to be able to get any images. So in this time lapse here, you'll see me setting up my equipment and then getting it cabled up. Once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and balance the setup and then I'll put it in its home position straight up and down. So once all of my equipment is set up, cabled up, and balanced, the next thing I want to do is verify which port my mount is connected to. Because remember, if the port listed in your mount driver is not correct, your mount will never connect. So at this point, in order to isolate the port, the only thing connected to my computer is going to be my mount. If you have other equipment connected to your computer, it could show other ports, so it makes it hard to isolate. What I do is I go into Device Manager, and if you don't know where to find that, you just go to Search at the bottom of your computer, type in Device Manager, and then click right there. That'll bring up this box. So what I'll do is go to Ports, and as you can see, my mount is connected to COM5. I double click on it, go to Port Settings, just verify everything is correct here, including my bits per second or baud rating. Once I verify everything is good, I just exit out and I'll bring up my mount driver, in this case, Green Swamp server. Now it's important to note, at this point, what you wanna do is make sure that your telescope is in its home position. In other words, OTA on top, counterweight bar pointed straight down, and then make sure your clutches are locked. Once you have that done, what you'll do is hit connect, here it'll prompt us to go into the home position. We'll hit OK. And at this point, it's important to understand, do not unlock your clutches or move your mount manually. Your mount driver cannot record that. So what'll happen is your mount driver will think your mount is in one position when in fact it's in another position and can cause a tripod collision and highly inaccurate go-to commands. Once you have this done, all we have to do is just minimize. Now what I do from here is connect the rest of my equipment, my camera, guider, uh, focuser, and all of that. And then what we'll do is we can start connecting equipment. I never just connect everything all at once. I like to control what Nina does. And uh, also, if I run into an issue, it's easier to isolate doing one at a time. So we'll do equipment. And we'll start with the camera. If you're running a filter wheel, you can go ahead and uh, connect your filter wheel at this point. I'm not running a filter wheel, so uh, I'm gonna skip on over to focuser, rotator, telescope, and guider. Now, once everything is connected, what we're gonna do is go to Options, Plate Solving, make sure ASTAP is selected, and then under Imaging, we just select the folder that we want our images to save to for the night. If you wanna change the folder, click the three dots, choose the folder that you want it to go to, and then just hit OK. And then we'll go into the Imaging tab. Now it's time to polar align. And I apologize, it's been stormy and cloudy for the last couple of months here in Queen Creek, but uh, we're not going to let that stop us. Remember, 
we are not tracking yet, so we can't use long exposures or autofocus. So what I do, I just use like two or three second exposures, and then I'll go ahead and take an exposure. Now let's pretend that this shows stars. What I do is I go to my focuser and I just adjust my focuser until I have my stars in focus. If you're not using uh, an autofocuser, just use the method that you use for focusing. And then once you have your stars in focus, we'll go to uh, three point polar alignment and then we'll polar align. From here, what I do is I install the filter that I'm gonna be using for the night. And then I will go to uh, take another image. Depending on my filter will determine uh, how long of uh, an exposure that I use. Uh, and then what we'll do the same process as before we pull our line, we're just gonna take individual exposures and adjust our focus until our stars are in focus again. Remember each filter that you use will affect focus differently. From there, I'll go to Sky Atlas, choose the target that I'm gonna be imaging for the night. Let's just use M42 for example. I'll set it for framing. Only because it's easier to just go slew center rotate if I'm running my rotator or slew and center if I'm not running my rotator. Once I'm over at my target, then I will go ahead and actually disconnect my camera from Nina. Remember, Nina needs the camera in order to plate solve its way over. Now, why do I do this? And the answer is to save time. Now, let me explain what I mean. When the camera is not connected to Nina, Nina cannot cool the camera. It's at this point that what I do is I will actually, once I'm at my target and I have my camera disconnected, I'll go into SharpCat. I will connect my camera in SharpCat. And then I will go to uh, Tools, Histogram, Smart Histogram, and then get my exposure recommendation. And then once that's done, I'll close out of my camera. I'll go back into Nina and then reconnect my camera. And then I will cool my camera. Now it takes time to cool the camera. So doing it this way, at this point, by the time I'm done with the rest of my workflow, my camera is cooled and ready to go. If I waited until the last step to do this, now I have to wait for my camera to cool before I can image. And remember, our, our time under the stars is limited, so we wanna optimize it. So why not cool the camera uh, as you're doing the rest of your stuff versus waiting? Just a quick tip there. And also remember, when you're using SharpCap Smart Histogram, you have to have your filter installed, otherwise you'll get false results. From here, what I do is I'll go into PHD2, and then I will go into Tools, Calibration Assistant. I'll slew to PHD2's optimal portion of the sky, which is right here, to do calibration, and then I'll calibrate my guiding system. Also notice how when we clicked Guider and then connect to Guider, it automatically brought up PHD2. So once my uh, calibration is done on my Guider, then I'll come in here and I will run a quick autofocus run. And now once my autofocus run is done, at that point, my camera is already cooled or pretty close to being cooled. So I will normally already have my framing all set up and ready to go. So I can just load my target into my sequence with my framing all set up. And then I will take SharpCap's uh, uh, recommendations for exposure and I'll put everything together in here. What I'll do from there is I will actually go to Flat Wizard, slew to Zenith, run my flat frames. And then uh, once I'm done with that, 
I can go into sequencer, hit play, and off I go into imaging throughout the night. And that is my workflow and what I do um, to prepare for the night. And again, if you uh, want to use mine exactly how I presented it, you're more than welcome to, or put your own touch to it and make it your own. Do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit that channel icon and make sure to subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming videos. Throw a comment in the comment section. What's your workflow? Did you find this helpful or uh, learn anything new from it? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.